Good evening. Welcome to the September 5th, 2012 meeting of the Murfreesboro Planning Commission. We have a quorum present, so I'll call the meeting to order at this time. First item on tonight's agenda is to approve the minutes of the July 18th, 2012, and the August 1st, 2012 Planning Commission meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? Hearing none, I'll declare them approved as submitted. We have seven public hearings scheduled for this evening. We'll move right into that. The first one is the amendments to the zoning ordinance regarding parking requirements for multiple family developments and hotels, motels. The planning department is the applicant. Mr. Adelot, good evening. Uh, yes, sir. The um, public hearing that we're going to conduct tonight on this matter has to do with our parking requirements. Earlier this year, we uh, had a staff report regarding the parking requirements for hotels, motels, for multifamily developments, and for uh, single-family residences. The uh, Planning Commission determined that we should move forward to consider some amendments that involve the multifamily developments and the hotels and motels. The first part of it would be uh, with regards to multiple family developments, and that is to amend their zone ordinance section 26 to allow parking in garages in apartment complexes when the parking in those garages is limited to only use uh, for parking to be counted towards required parking. Uh, th this seems to be something that will um, reduce our uh, exterior parking and actually it will have some, some benefits to the, the community even in terms of stormwater management. So we don't have as much paved area, but we're getting st still the number of parking uh, spaces that's needed. The second part has to do with the hotels and motels. Uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we had a hotel uh, on uh, Silent Hill Drive and Conference Center Boulevard. Uh, that was a good example of what was uh, the problem, and that is our standard is 1.1 parking spaces per guest room. And their design and their uh, mo model and their uh, prototype indicates a need for one parking space per guest room. Their concern is that the 1.1 causes them to need more land and, uh, be, and being able to build less building. Uh, they uh, have pretty much convinced me, and the, um, apparently uh, the standard is in most communities one space per guest room. So our standard is uh, a much more excessive. So uh, we uh, also determined to conduct a public hearing to consider that amendment as well. And that's also in Section 26 in uh, the uh, chart that deals with the uh, off-street parking. Uh, included with your agenda materials is a, a basically what would be inserted into agenda into an ordinance format if this moves forward to the council. Uh, the planning commission needs to conduct a public hearing on these two amendments to section 26 of the zone ordinance, and then you'll need to prepare a recommendation. Uh, after the uh, public hearing, before your deliberations or, or during your deliberations, if you have questions of myself, I'm available to answer your questions. Okay, a couple of questions real quick. A few years ago, we had approved one hotel to be built with an underground parking garage. It would not affect that in any way then? Uh, no, it would not. Okay. Uh, that, that one actually um, has lapsed because of inaction, mm -hmm. and it was zoned as a planned development. As, as it happens, we'll probably see an amendment to uh, change or to change that zone in one of these days. But uh, it looks like that particular plan has fallen through, and it would not uh, affect that development plan. Okay. Question. Mr. Young. Mr. Adelot, in a multifamily development, if you had a garage situation, I had read or something maybe in our discussion about that the apartment complex would basically tell the tenant that he could not use that as a storage space and it had to be used as a park car parking garage? Uh, yes, sir. In but fact, we the, wouldn't regulate that. Well, well, the operative language is that parking spaces within garages for multifamily developments may be considered as required parking for purposes of this section, provided such spaces are used only for parking of automobiles. Spaces used or available to be used for the parking or storage of boats, recreational vehicles, trailers, equipment, or any other item are not to be so considered. Uh, if we become aware that someone, uh, after approving the site plan, if we become aware that someone's storing these type of items or using it for storage of just stuff, uh, we would put them on notice that they're in violation of the site plan. And we would enforce that? Yes, we, we would. would enforce that, okay. It's usually not very difficult to enforce that sort of thing because uh, once management, usually management doesn't want their space to be abused. Uh, they write into their leases, but we also, uh, once we put them on those, they're usually very good about complying with that sort of thing. Because if they don't have enough parking, they've got a problem in their development. Well, they would usually solve it themselves. Yes. Any other questions before we open the public hearing? 
Okay, before I open the public hearing, I'll briefly go over the rules we conduct our public hearings by. I'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to speak either for or against the proposal, please come to the microphone, state your name, and give your address. Hold your comments no more than three minutes, if you would, please. Make all your comments and questions to the Planning Commission. If you do have questions, we'll try to get them answered at the conclusion of the public hearing. That being said, I'll open the public hearing for this proposal and ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Anybody at all? Okay. Close the public hearing. Is there any more discussion or questions from the Planning Commission? No, Mr. Chairman, I make a recommendation for approval. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. <coughs> the motion carries. We've gone to the second public hearing. Amendments to the zoning ordinance once again regarding Christmas tree sales, accessory to institutional group assembly uses. The planning department is the applicant. Mr. Adelot. Yes, sir. Um, this uh, amendment has been motivated by the uh, Boy Scouts of, of America in a situation that um, they find themselves in in our community. Uh, Christmas tree sales are often used as a fundraiser for uh, a couple of troops, particularly one in the uh, Salem Pike area. And they are um, in a re residential zone. We have a provision in our zone ordinance that allows a uh, uh, re retail sales of Christmas trees associated with an institutional group assembly in a residential zone uh, subject to issuance of a special use permit. One of the requirements is that the uh, user uh, post a $500 bond to assure cleanup after the uh, sales are over. Uh, these type of... Um, Sales are always done on a parent lot or, a, or with a church use because the Boy Scouts are very uh, closely associated with the, uh, the uh, church which the troop is, is organized with. But they are not the church. So they are required to post the, the bond. But there is a parent organization, if you will, that is really responsible for the property. It will take care of the property and would very uh, likely not neglect the property. And were they to do so, we would have the ability to put them on notice and take them to, with codes enforcement. The, the problem, though, for the Boy Scouts is that some of these troops, as a fundraiser, they find themselves posting $500 uh, bond, and that really affects their ability to secure inventory to sell uh, Christmas trees. Uh, last year, this came up, Mr. Dan Onks with the, uh, the, the troop uh, at the, uh, the church really uh, made a very convincing argument to me that this is something we need to address. And uh, I felt very uh, comfortable in making this a recommendation to you. And what we want to do is that um, add an um, additional sentence or, or some additional verbiage to Section 6 of uh, Subsection 6 of Section 25D of the Zone Ordinance. And this is a section that authorizes uh, sales of Christmas trees, uh, uh, accessory to an institution or group assembly. And basically the provision... The operative provision reads as, right now, as sales of Christmas trees accessory to institutional group assembly use, which uses include recreation fields, public buildings, public or private schools, grades K-12, lodges, country clubs, churches, and other places of worship shall be permitted in the RS-15, 12, 10, 8, 4, RD, RM-12, RM-16, RM-22, and RZ districts, subject to the additional standards in Section 9D2. And I want to add and I'm recommending that you approve, provided that if the applicant provides written documentation from the owner of the institution of group assembly use or duly authorized agent thereof, that the institution of group assembly use will be responsible for cleaning and clearing of the site within the time specified in Section 92, EEEE19AA, should the applicant fail to do so. The applicant for such accessory Christmas tree sales use shall not be required to post a deposit as otherwise required by Section 92 EE -E -E 6. Uh, that's kind of hard to follow, I understand, because of all the, the, the uh, letters and the alphabet I used. I thought you were stuttering. Um, uh, but I think that this uh, accomplishes what we want to do, and I think it will help the Boy Scouts to further their mission and will not put the city in jeopardy of having messy property in our community. Okay. Any Need questions? Public hearing and then yep. Any public. questions from members of the Planning Commission? If there are none, I'll open the public hearing for this matter to ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. I just want to say thanks to uh, give your name. Please give your name, sir. I'm sorry. Address. I'm Dan Oms with Boy Scout Troop 197 at 2511 Highway 99 South in Murfreesboro. 
the, the folks he's talking about. Um, I just want to say thanks to Matt and thanks to Mr. Adelot for listening to me. Uh, about a year ago, I got a call from him a couple of weeks ago, and I was, uh, I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, uh, that they, they listened to us. And I only want to correct one thing that Mr. Adelot said, if I may. Um, the troop is a ministry of the church. We are actually part of the church. If the church goes away, we go away and have to find a new home. So that's kind of the, the whole thing that we've been dealing with since we started six years ago, that we're not really a separate entity. We are part of the church. And Brother Don certainly understands that. And uh, we certainly appreciate you doing what you did, sir. And Matt, thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate what you did. Anybody else? Nobody? I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, uh, I think this is a good example of where the city is constantly looking at its ordinances and applying common sense approach to situations. And I wholeheartedly agree with this, and so I move for approval. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Third public hearing is amendments to the subdivision regulations regarding changes to subdivision plats. The planning staff is the applicant. Mr. Adelon. Yes, sir. Uh, this public hearing is going to be a little bit different than the um, previous two and the ones we have later tonight. In this public hearing, we're going to consider an amendment to our subdivision regulations. As a um, subdivision regulation, it is your authority, and you will not be making a recommendation, but you will be taking action. Uh, unlike a rezoning uh, or, or a zoning ordinance amendment like we've just done, where we make a recommendation to council, this is where you take action. So uh, that is a preface. What I'm proposing tonight is that you make two relatively modest amendments to the zone ordinance. Uh, actually, it's four, but it really is, is a duplicate in two different sections of the uh, subdivision regulations. And the first of them is that, and both of them deal with amendments to the plat. The first one is to add a provision that once a final plat has been signed by one or more of the required signatories, but before it has been recorded, no alterations or additions of any kind may be made to any portion of the final plat without written approval of the planning director. And that would go into section uh, 3.11 into section 4.10.1. Uh, basically the same uh, provision at two places. The second amendment would be after a final plat has been recorded, changes to correct mistakes made on the final plat may be made by filing a certificate of correction prepared and signed by the surveyor of record. Any certificate of correction shall also be signed by the plan director prior to recording. Again, that would be put at two different places in the subdivision regulations. What, what has motivated this has been a, uh, a little bit of confusion, and it also has been a little bit of long-term practice. What we, what we want to avoid is that after all the signatories have signed the plat, that there are changes made before it is taken to the registrar's office to be recorded. In, in the, um, when I first came to Murfreesboro as a planner, it was the practice that once the plan director signed the plat, he kept possession of it, and he took... He collected fees for it to be recorded, and his staff walked the plat to the registrar's office and recorded the plat. Uh, I've made many trips to the uh, registrar's office when uh, Mr. Welch was the plan director and Mr. Cantrell was the plan director to record plats. Once the plan director signed it, there was no risk of there being any changes made to it because it stayed in the possession of the planning staff until it was recorded. That practice changed when the county adopted the adequate facilities tax and the development tax. With it, we agreed that we would sign the plat, give it to them, and let them carry it to the county, and then make their peace with the county on the fee, and then they could re get it recorded before we issued a building permit. And that is our practice. What I want to be clear is I, I don't want some uh, maybe well-intended developer saying, you know, I've got an afterthought. I want to change the street name. Or I've got an afterthought. You know, I can split that lot into two and have two lots. And myself... The city engineer, the water and sewer staff, uh, the, wa the Murfreesboro Electric staff, not being aware that this small change has been made, although it may be minor in, in the, the scheme of things, it may be a big thing for, for us. When street names are changed and we don't know about it, when someone calls in a, uh, an emergency, we might not be able to respond properly. So it's really to keep the change from being made. And basically the reason for the plan director's signature is this plan director becomes a clearinghouse. If they want to make the change, they bring it to me. I look at it and I say, Dad deals with water and sewer. Let's give them a call right quick, see if there's a problem. 
If there's no problem, we can make the change, go on about our business. If it's a problem, we say, hold on, don't do anything, go, go take care of this with water and sewer. So it will, it will help to validate a practice. The second part, after the plat's recorded, I don't care how good everybody is, there's always going to be something that comes up. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of spelling. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of uh, um, a typographical error on a plat. And these don't come to light until the closing. The plat gets recorded before the closing. Then at the closing, somebody's name was misspelled. Uh, or some deed reference was misprinted uh, on the plat. These need to be changed. We can fix that. A certificate of plat correction can be done. The practice has been, as long as I can remember, the plan director signed the certificate of plat correction. If there's a complication, he contacts the department that's involved before he uh, signs it. If everything's fine, it's signed, it's recorded, and no problems. Sometimes these can be quick. We don't want to hold people up when it's legitimate. If there's a problem, we want to be ca catch it before it's a crisis. These two um, uh, items are minor, uh, but in the scheme of things, they are important, and I will urge that you uh, adopt them. I have discussed this with some of the engineers in our community because I wanted them to know about it, and they, they support it. They understand. There's, they, they don't, this is not a problem from the industry side that I'm aware of. So uh, you need to have a public hearing on this, and then you need to take action. If you have questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Any questions or comments before we open the public hearing? Okay, I'll open the public hearing. I ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Nobody? Okay. Close the public hearing. If there's any questions or discussion, this is the time. Otherwise, we're ready for a motion. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Moving on to item D, amendments to the zoning ordinance, section 24, article V, I guess that's 5C, uh, to allow HI and LI zones to be eligible zones for a PSO, which is a planned signage overlay district. Planning staff is the applicant. Straight along. Uh, yes, sir. This is a another uh, relatively minor amendment, and staff is going to uh, recommend uh, its approval. Uh, basically, as we have been working with the Amazon site plan, uh, the Amazon has been unusual in, in many respects. Most of the most of the unusual elements have been because of its size. It's, it's just a very large building with a very large parking lot with a, um, well, just everything about it is big. I guess the name Amazon fits it well. It is big. But the, um, the problem we have is that the, the, it, this is going to have a lot of shipping and receiving, a lot of employees, a lot of visitors to the price, and there needs to be directional signage that helps people find their way around to know where to go and to do it safely and effectively and efficiently. The place is well laid out. The design will help with that. But the signage will be what really helps to, to finish it up. As they made application for their signage uh, permits, uh, they found that uh, some of the signs that they, they really needed, and we believe that they need, would not be permitted. Also, the size of their sign that they want to place attached to the building, uh, once uh, it was attached to the building, if it met our size requirements, it would I would liken it to the... A uh, little uh, corporate logo at the bottom of the screen placed upon the building. You can hardly see it. You can't read it. So they actually demonstrated to us that because of the distance from the road, because of the size of their building, they actually needed the ability to have a little bit larger sign attached to the building so that it would actually look better, if you, if you can believe that. Usually, I, I think of the um, we think of smaller signs as better signs. That's not always true. Signage needs to be in the appropriate scale with which it's attached. In this case, we believe that a little bit larger signs than our sign ordinance would allow is, 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 is appropriate in this particular instance because of the scale of the site, the distance from the road, the size of the building. With these um, being a problem, we uh, suggested that we investigate the ability to have a planned signage overlay, similar to what we've done with the avenues, the Stones River Mall, and with Middle Tennessee Medical Center. Uh, as we looked at our ordinance, we found that we had not allowed this type of signage except in the gateway overlay district, on land zone commercial highway, or zoned planned unit development. Well, obviously, Amazon is not in the gateway overlay district, and it, and it should not be. 
Uh, obviously, uh, it's already zone heavy industrial. That's why they chose their site, and it's not a, a planned development, uh, and it's not zone commercial highway. The site meets the size requirements of over 20 acres. We felt that staff uh, could be very comfortable in recommending that now that we've had some experience with this type of uh, signage approach to uh, expand our zone ordinance to allow uh, PSO signage um, in the heavy and light industrial zones. So that is precisely what this public hearing is uh, for. Uh, and as I was sitting here, my little laptop went out. Uh, so. Um, we're recommending this amendment to our um, zoning ordinance. You need to conduct a public hearing on this amendment, and then you need to make a recommendation to council. We have with us Mrs. Um, um, Amelia Kerr. She's an audience. She's available to help answer questions, along with myself and Mr. Ives, if you have them, about this amendment to the zoning ordinance. Okay. Any questions for uh, Mrs. Kerr or any comments? If not, I'll open the public hearing. Ask anybody to come forward that'd like to speak. Seeing nobody come forward, I'll close the public <clears throat> hearing. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Moving on to item E. The zoning request for approximately 85 acres along Joby Jackson Parkway to be zoned PSO which is Planned Signage Overlay, U.S. Real Estate Limited Partnership, care of Matt Taylor as the applicant. Mr. Tradelock. Yes, sir. Included with your GIN materials is a PSO application package that Mr. Uh, Matt Taylor has prepared on behalf of his uh, client. Uh, the, uh, well, you already told us who it was in the uh, introductory remark. Uh, U.S. Real Estate Limited Partnership. This outlines the basically what they are making as their PSO amendment. It outlines the type of signs, the size of signs, the placement of signs. Uh, it will be uh, able to happen under the amendment that we just made to the uh, zone ordinance. Uh, Ms. Amelia Kerr has worked very much with this program. She's been working with the signs for, for several weeks. If you have questions about this uh, signs package, I would uh, ask that you address them to her. Mr. Matt Taylor is also here. He's the uh, gentleman who has been working very much on this um, project, start to finish. Um, uh, Mr. Taylor is, has been working on it. Uh, he put together this uh, program book to explain the, the signage package. Uh, of course, myself and Mr. Ives also are available to answer questions. You need to conduct a public hearing on this uh, PSO uh, application, and then you need to uh, deliberate and then make a recommendation to council. Any questions from the Planning Commission? Ms. Kerr, did you have anything you'd like to add? Okay, I'll open the public hearing, ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Nobody coming forward, I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, um, due to the size of this facility and the numerous roads coming in and out, I think signage is going to be very important to get the right people at the right place, the vendors in the right drives and the employees in the in the right situation and and due to the scope of this it, it needs to be fixed and I, and I think this is a good fix and we've used this same approach in several other situations such as the avenues so we're not plowing new ground we're just including a new property with it so with that I'll move for approval Second. motions made the seconded all in favor say aye Aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Move on to item F. Zoning application for approximately 2.4 acres along Old Las Casas Highway to be rezoned from PRD to RM16. Rajesh Agarwal is the applicant. Ms. Ely. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Did, I, did I wake you? I'm sorry. No, you didn't. I was just watching Bill. I, I think we have a... a uh, presentation prepared for us but this next public hearing is to consider rezoning approximately four or four parcels from PRD to RM16 the property is located along the western side of um, old Las Casas Highway so um, I know some people who called me were a little confused they thought this was on Las Casas Highway the properties to the south and to the um, east are zoned multifamily residential district property to the north of PRD, that's Plain Residential District. This property was zoned RM16, multifamily residential district, several years ago. The um, Mr. Agarwal, who 
was also the applicant who requested a zoning change at that time, requested the properties be rezoned from RM16 to PRD to allow what we call rooming house. is essentially um, apartments, and they, are, they were geared to college students due to the location, but without the kitchen facility. Mr. Agarwal met with Mr. Adelot and myself, and um, I think maybe forgot some of the details of the plans and presented a proposal for some more traditional style apartments, which would include a full kitchen in addition to the living spaces. And looking at the PRD program, we um, advised Mr. Agarwal that he'd have several options if he wanted to continue down that route, one of which would be to amend the PRD program book or to change the zoning. Um, I guess after thinking about it, Mr. Agarwal chose to go back to the, the zone that it was before he zoned at PRD. Um, which is RM16. He does own some of the properties that are contiguous with this parcel to the west. So there would also be the possibility of maybe adding these parcels to Landy Yardy owns and doing a little bit better of a plan um, because they would have more space to work with and to be able to pro provide the amenities that we would expect in a multifamily uh, development. You should conduct a public hearing before making your recommendation. Um, after considering the item, then uh, you should forward your recommendation to the city council. But I think before opening public hearing, Mr. Huddleston, do you have some information you'd like to provide? I do. Thank you, Ms. Ely. You're welcome. Good evening, Chairman Lamb and members of the Planning Commission. I'm Bill Huddleston with Huddleston Steel Engineering. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here on behalf of Dr. Agarwal. Uh, we've been working on this project for a pretty good while now. Um, back in what we like to refer to as the good old days when things were going great, uh, Dr. Agarwal was looking to do a little different project. He was looking to do uh, what's called a rooming house, uh, and that's what the uh, zone, the PRD zoning was approved for. Um, that The rooming house doesn't really have a kitchen of any kind. Uh, as we explored, or as he explored the, this type of use, he started realizing that you really need some sort of kitchen. Uh, college students uh, do <coughs> eat in their rooms uh, if they're not eating out or, or in the school facilities. Now, um, in this particular instance, as we got to working again with staff and trying to figure out what we want to do, I don't want to put words in Mr. Adelot's mouth, but he was, he was pretty uncomfortable, I think, with the rooming house uh, project. Uh, we and our, my client became very uncomfortable with the rooming house project. It just turned out to be not what the market called for and not what he wanted to do. He wants to do a basically a regular apartment project for student housing. Uh, what you see in a lot of these are, are four bedrooms, three or four bedrooms, and then a common uh, living room type area and a common kitchen area. Uh, the, the bedrooms do have locks on them, um, but, uh, and the, and the uh, suite itself has locks on it. Uh, but, but that's more of a traditional uh, student type housing, and that's what we're looking for here. So tonight we're here to ask to go back to a traditional RM16 zoning uh, so that we can, uh, uh, can develop this project uh, that we show a conceptual here on this board. Uh, also to the right, uh, there's a small sort of picture of uh, what we anticipate this project to look like. Uh, Mr. Mike Picklesheimer, who's done a lot of work here in the past, is the architect. And I'll pass around uh, a picture so you can see it better. You might not be able to see it on the board too well. So having said all that, once again, we are asking for a traditional RM16 zoning. One, now this project, uh, we meet all the setbacks, we meet all the parking, we'll meet all the landscaping requirements. We'll meet all the requirements except for one thing, and that's the floor area ratio. Uh, these floor area ratios are something that's sort of continued in our zoning ordinance for a long time. I'm not sure really how applicable they are now. Um, you know, given our rules, there's, there's plenty, as, as you see, plenty of green on this, on this project. Uh, we'll be able to satisfy stormwater on site. Uh, again, landscaping, setbacks, uh, parking is all there but we're not able to satisfy this floor area ratio. So what we're sort of looking for tonight from you, not only is our RM16 zoning, but whether you have some comfort in us going to the BZA 
to ask for a variance from that ratio, right? The ratio is, is 0.35 in the zoning ordinance. Basically, that's saying that uh, you take your floor area uh, and divide it by the total area of land and your, uh, that fraction should not be more than 0.35. We're actually going to end up with 0.45. Uh, we've got a three-story building here. Uh, that picture may show four stories, but it's actually just three stories. And so we don't meet that floor area ratio. We end up with about a 0.45, which exceeds the 0.35 in the zoning ordinance. So um, if it's okay with you, we'd like to find out if you're comfortable with us going to BZA to ask for that variance. Um, and I will stop there and answer any questions. Okay. Well, maybe before you ask questions, I'd like to chime in something, too. Yes, sir. Um, I'll kind of put this under the category of breaking news. This morning, uh, Mr. Agarwal, Mr. Huddleston, and Mr. Picklesheimer, the architect, uh, paid a visit to me in advance of the public hearing to let me know about this issue involving the floor area ratio. That the, um, In expectation of a um, approval of the RM16 zoning in a more traditional uh, multifamily uh, approach, they had already begun to go a little bit beyond the concept stage of the uh, development plan to, to begin to shape a site plan. The um, issue of the uh, floor area ratio had, had become apparent to them. And I suggested, well, at this point in time, it's a little bit late in the game to be amending your PUD or the PRD. It's just, it's just too late. You can't, can't do that tonight. That, that won't work. Uh, but it would be possible to make application back as a PRD if you want to. In fact, that's what they were thinking. I would suggest that they do. Uh, and then uh, I said the second thing is it looks like there, there is an issue of hardship involved here. This is not the first complex that has really stumbled into this uh, four-year ratio since we, um, since we uh, adopted our stormwater regulations. What's happened is the stormwater regulations, the landscaping requirements, the parking requirements, all that caused the floor area ratios to get out of whack from what would have been expected in 1984 when we adopted the, the floor area ratios that we currently have. The, they, we've, not, we've never changed them. Since I've been here, we have never changed them. But we have increased our landscaping requirements dramatically. We do have a, a stormwater ordinance that now requires some land to be set aside uh, that complicates this. Uh, and our setbacks. The the thing that, about this development that caused me to be um, a little bit, I guess, um, sympathetic towards it is that it is the right use at the right place in our community. The highest and best and most appropriate use in our community for student housing is it within walking distance of the university. That's just that's just makes sense. Every time a student can live near the university and have their trip ends uh, or their trips done by walking or bicycling and have that capability pretty much year-round, it's good for the rest of the community because it keeps them off our streets and keeps their cars off the streets. So with that being the case, uh, I feel that this, this place right here has probably the appeal. The number of units and the number of bedrooms is not, is not excessive by any means by, by comparison to, to other properties on the RM-16. So I suggested to uh, the applicants to, to discuss the, uh, the issue of the variance because I think there is some hardship element when you look at the stormwater and the landscaping requirements and the parking requirements. Keep that in mind. Uh, and the other part is it might be time that we just, we just amend the zone ordinance. There have been times, that I've, and I have discussed this with some of my other staff, our urban or environmental with our city engineer, to just take those section provisions out of chart too. Chart 2 uh, is the chart that does the bulk regulations, and it specifies the uh, 0.35 to just in RM16, RM12, just to delete those out because we accomplished the ends of having open space through landscaping, through the amenities, through the stormwater. So uh, before our public hearing, uh, I want you to keep that in mind. If you were to uh, fill the variance approaches more appropriate than amend the ordinance, that's fine. If you feel that amend the ordinance is the best approach, give me a signal. Next month we'll have something back before you. Uh, or if you think that no, a plan development approach is what we ought to do, then uh, let the applicants know. Uh, I think that the economy has recovered enough that the applicant is actually ready to build something, and he's, he's moving forward with wanting to get his design so he can turn in a site plan. 
I'll be glad to answer questions before you have a public hearing. I think an amendment to the ordinance sounds in order. I tend to agree with that, Chairman. I think for this project, if they want to, like we've done with some other similar type circumstances, let them go ahead and go forward. We approve this tonight with pursuing the BZA. If the ordinance can't catch up in time, you've got that option that I think I think we probably all be amenable to that. In the meantime, working on updating the ordinance to look at the overall um, issue. Okay. Oh, certainly any ordinance man would have a public hearing as well. And certainly uh, I think anything that you're saying in that regard is tentative to hearing from anybody that might want to speak tonight. And we'll, we'll maybe firm up that after the public hearing. Okay. Any other questions of Mr. Huddleston while he's up? Thank, Thank you, Bill. You. Uh, Mr. Huddleston. I, yeah, I've got Excuse one, me. One, was, one quick question. Real quick. On the, uh, the uh, brick, how much composition is brick and frame on this? Uh, oh, it's... Almost 100% brick and glass. This this building that you're seeing is from a uh, community that I visited. And actually, I, I liked it. So, uh, me and Ms. Logan went over there a couple of years ago and looked at it. Uh, it's in Franklin, Tennessee, in McEwen Place. And uh, it's a masonry building. It's a more urban type of uh, use. Uh, this is a four-story building in the photograph, and but uh, a three-story building could carry much of the same design elements. Uh, I was surprised when they came in and showed me this is what they want to build because it's what I suggested. Mr. Halliburton. Mr. Halliburton, uh, both Ms. Ely and Mr. Aylott mentioned amenities. Can What amenities are we speaking of that would Glad be part? you asked. <laughs> if I can find them. We'll have visited again at site plan, won't we? That's correct, but uh, I'd like to go ahead and tell you about it. Uh, Dr. Agarwal is real excited about this project. Uh, he's going to provide an elevator, which is not required and you don't often see in, in student housing. Uh, looking at a club room with a big screen TV, uh, a billiards room, um, also a storage room for the residents, a 24-hour fitness room uh, for the residents. There will be outdoor grilling area with a picnic table, uh, high-speed Internet access, uh, resident cyber lounge uh, with fax, copier, printer, and coffee bar. Wi-Fi in all public areas. Uh, bike racks is, is uh, encouraged by uh, Mr. Adelot. Uh, laundry facilities. Um, he's going to be. You're going to be able to get a short-term lease. Uh, there'll be 24-hour emergency maintenance, and uh, some of these units will be furnished as well. And I think they may have discussed the possibility for some electric car charger to be available for the. Uh Residents. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Adelot, I've got two other questions. Just uh, you, you talked about this floor area ratio. Is that uh, ratio or the math based upon the total floor area of the whole building or just the base floor area of the building? It's, it's all the floors combined, okay. but certain elements are excluded. For instance, common areas like hallways are excluded, stairwells are excluded. Uh, um, uncovered patios or, or porches or decks are excluded. So the higher you go up, the the in essence, uh, the higher your ratio is going to be. Correct. Uh, well, potentially it will increase it. Right. Right. Okay. But if, a four story would never work here because it would, it would just it would have blown out the. That's the roof. what a, my point or question. Okay. And then the I, I just want to make sure that. Um, with the thought process that you're going to have four four um, bedrooms in a particular unit, okay, knowing that all four of these individuals will, in all likelihood, have their own vehicle, that whatever um, parking requirements that we have for a project like this, that and I, uh, that the ratio is is going to be taken care of in reference to those parking requirements. Uh, yes, they will. I made sure when I talked to him this morning, I wanted to inquire, are you meeting all of our parking requirements? Not only are they meeting them, they're exceeding them. And what the requirement standard is, it's 1.1 parking space per bedroom. Okay. Per uh, which, per uh, bedroom. Uh, per bedroom. Had, had nothing to do with units. Yeah. Okay. Right. Everybody's got their right. uh, For a uh, unit with two or more bedrooms, it's based upon the bedrooms. 1.1 okay. parking space per bedroom. And I can very confidently tell you that was in, in my report was more than any other community requires 
of the uh, 12 communities that all of which have major universities had. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trump. Vista parking is, is involved. What, what number of spaces were Vista parking over above the... Uh, we're looking at 176 parking spaces, and it's going to be somewhere uh, 155 units, I think, somewhere in there. So 15 over that is 170. So, uh, excuse me, it's 1.1 per veteran, so it's, that's 10 percent higher than, than the number. So, so, you, so if you have a four-bedroom unit we require 4.4 parking spaces so if, if each of the if each of the students had a car uh, that'd be four parking spaces and then you got 10 percent more than that and we're exceeding that by uh, eight or nine spaces any other questions thank you mr Allison. thank you i'll open the public hearing this time ask anybody to come forward that'd like to speak Anybody at all? I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Adler, we had a letter here from Mr. Bob Frank pertaining to a privacy fence. Is that something we'll be addressing at a, uh, at a future at a site plan? Yes, we will be, and I was real careful to take my opportunity to address it this morning with the applicant and his uh, design team. Uh, and uh, I heard very, they heard very clearly about my concern for Mr. Frank, and actually on this concept plan they brought to me, they already had a uh, privacy fence on it. Before I did, I shared with them Mr. Frank's uh, situation. Mr. Frank is unable to be here tonight. He's he's under the weather, but uh, I am aware of his situation, and I have conveyed it. And we will return to that when we review the site plan in whatever form that site plan comes, whether okay. it's RM16 zoning or plan development. There's no further questions or comments. We're ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve. A second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed. And that Welcome is with also the uh, expectation, uh, based on discussion, that we move forward to amend the zone orders to yes, sir. address the uh, floor yeah, ratios. Let, let them work simultaneously, okay. parallel to each other. We'll do it. We'll be bringing yes, back sir. something next month, <clears throat> next meeting. Okay. Move on to the final public hearing of the evening. That is a street renaming study for a portion of County Farm Road to be renamed to Joby Jackson Parkway. The planning staff, the applicant. Mr. Blomley, it's good to see you tonight. Thank you, Chairman Lamb. Good to see you. And good evening, Chairman Lamb and members of the Planning Commission. As you mentioned, we're looking at uh, a street renaming for a portion of County Farm Road. It's the portion of County Farm Road that is bounded on its west side by South Church Street and on its east side, ironically enough, by Joe B. Jackson Parkway. Uh, we're looking at renaming this, to jo this section of County Farm Road to Joe B. Jackson Parkway in, con in conjunction with the Joe B. Jackson Parkway uh, road construction project. Uh, the city of Murfreesboro is tentatively scheduled to begin construction of the Joe B. Jackson Parkway extension from I-24 to South Church Street uh, in the fall of this year. Uh, the construction project is scheduled to be a 24-month project and will be funded jointly by the state of Tennessee, the city of Murfreesboro, and Rutherford County. This project was included in the city's 1995 major thoroughfare plan, which was approved and recorded in 1998. In addition, it is also included in Rutherford County's Long Range Transportation Plan. Uh, there are two separate existing segments of Joby Jackson Parkway. The existing easternmost segment, which is five lanes, is located between I-24 and Manchester Pike. This is the, uh, uh, the area where, of course, the Amazon Fulfillment Center is being constructed. Uh, this roadway segment and the associated I-24 interchange were completed in 2003. Uh, the existing westernmost segment, which, was, which does not currently have lane markings, uh, was constructed as a part of the Stevens Bend subdivision. Uh, it was named Joby Jackson Parkway in anticipation of the upcoming road improvement project that will connect it to the easternmost segment uh, with this uh, project that will begin in the fall of this year. Uh, the Planning Commission approved the final plat for Stevens Bend Section 1 with the Joby, ba Joby Jackson Parkway road name in 1998. Uh, in May of this year, the Planning Commission approved a site plan for a new Walmart to be located at the southeast corner of South Church Street and County Farm Road. Uh, improvements to the westernmost segment of County Farm Road from US 231 east to the Stevens Bend subdivision uh, are included in the road construction project. Uh, the approved Walmart development will be oriented to face this westernmost segment of County Farm Road, 
uh, Walmart has actually applied for building permits and uh, we have brought this renaming to you today in anticipation of the uh, uh, the construction of the Walmart and the Walmart had being oriented towards uh, uh, County Farm Road it will be given a Joby Jackson Parkway address if you concur and decide to uh, rename the uh, this segment of Joby to, of County Farm Road to Joby Jackson Parkway the current intersection of County Farm Road and Joby Jackson Parkway at the Stevens Bend subdivision defies street naming uh, protocol as there is a 90 degree turn in uh, County Farm Road and it heads southward. The section of County Farm Road that heads southward would not be affected by this change. It would just be the segment that is from South Church Street to the Stevens Bend subdivision. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, back in the 1990s, when uh, the, uh, both the city's and the county's transportation plans were adopted, it was envisioned uh, that this portion of County Farm Road would be renamed to Joe B. Jackson Parkway. Uh, with the uh, Walmart uh, approval and Walmart uh, ready to begin construction, and with uh, uh, the road project uh, in the very near future, uh, now is a good time to visit the renaming of this segment of County Farm Road. Uh, the eastern half of this segment of County Farm Road is actually located in uh, Rutherford County's jurisdiction. On August 6th of uh, this year, the Rutherford County Road Board uh, voted to rename the portion of County Farm Road that is within their jurisdiction to Joe B. Jackson Parkway. Uh, the western half of this segment of County Farm Road is located uh, in the city limits, and uh, the Planning Commission uh, uh, as, as is our protocol, holds public hearings on any street naming, uh, street renamings uh, that occur within the city limits of Murfreesboro. There are 22 addresses that will be affected by this street name change, 20 of which are actually located in the county, uh, and two of which are located in the city, even though the right of way is split about 50 50 between jurisdictions. Uh, we've been coordinating with the county, uh, with the county planning department and the, uh, the county road board, as I mentioned, uh, and we will continue to do so uh, to ensure that there is a smooth transition uh, with the address changes uh, from County Farm Road addresses to Joby Jackson Parkway addresses. Uh, if the Planning Commission uh, approves this uh, uh, street name change, it will then go to the City Council uh, for ratification of the Planning Commission's action. Uh, in your agenda materials, uh, we've included a, a brief study on, on uh, the street name change. Uh, in the study, in the appendix, there are some photographs that you might find interesting of that intersection, uh, the current intersection of Joe B. Jackson and County Farm Road that I mentioned defies our, our normal protocol. I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing um, if you have any, any questions for me. Mr. Blomley, if the County Road Commission or Road Board was to not act on this to, to change the name, where would we stand in that regard? Good question. Well, we've had that situation come up once before, and uh, I believe that was with the um, uh, Wilkinson Pike uh, renaming to, uh, or the Manson Pike renaming to Wilkinson Pike. Uh, and we ended up um, initiating an annexation study uh, for that property and, and annexing that property. Uh, the, uh, the county road board um, has uh, the, the more recent requests that we have uh, worked with the county planning department on sending to the county road board, including uh, numerous changes dealing uh, with regards to Veterans Parkway. Uh, the county road board has, uh, has concurred with both the city and county planning departments and voted to approve those. So you feel we're in concurrent on all this then? Yes, they did. as I mentioned, they voted at their August sixth meeting to approve. Okay. Any uh, any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Blomley. I'll open the public hearing. Ask anybody to come forward that'd like to speak. Mr. One at a time. Okay. Okay. So I'll close the public hearing. What are the wishes of this commission? Move for approval. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. The motion carries. That concludes the public hearing portion of our agenda tonight.
Move on to staff reports and other business. Mr. Adelon. Yes, sir. Included with the 2012-2013 uh, annual budget, the uh, planning staff requested funding for laptops, well, not I laptops but iPads, for planning commission members so we can head towards a electronic agenda in the same fashion that the uh, council has. Uh, two of our members are council members, and you all already have them, so we didn't we budget didn't for you all. You all can use the same ones. But at next month's meeting, I think we're going to have your uh, iPads uh, ready to hand out or at least to begin to orient you. Some of you will pick them up and have no problems. Uh, you already know what to do, or you have a uh, young child uh, as <laughs> to help you. Uh, I'll ask my you grandchildren be, to help me with it. Some of you may be like me. In those cases, the plan staff will do what we can to help you. In my case, I will refer you to someone who will be able to help you, and that is the person who helps me, and that's Ms. Ely. But uh, I think we're going to find, uh, once, as you noticed tonight, I kind of lost my screen for a moment, and I had a minor crisis, but I figured it out before it got too bad. Um, we will find sometimes there will be a tool that will confuse us, but I think overall we're going to find it to be a tool that will help us. Yeah. Because those plates that you see often in eight and a half, eleven, and have trouble reading, you'll be able to blow them up. You'll be able to see it. Uh, we're going to try to make this as uh, as helpful as we can and use it as a tool. We will be wanting feedback from you as we learn how to use it. We uh, went through many years as we worked on the paper agenda and learned how to make it work, uh, and to a point where we were comfortable with it. But did we even continue to make improvements? We will be doing the same with the electronic approach. So as we move into this uh, new age, we're going to have to learn some things. Uh, we will have some instructions about city policy to, to convey to you as you uh, receive this uh, so that you don't make mistakes that, you, you know, no porn, for instance, uh, that, that kind of thing. But we'll, we'll go over that. That's even We need to remind ourselves sometimes the things you don't do. Uh, but we will be having some discussions um, about these uh, later. But I wanted to show you what they're going to look like and, sh and assure you that we are ready to get them to you. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Adelot? Uh Yes, sir. There's one more thing, and it's uh, something I think that you all can see for yourselves. I think the economy is beginning to recover. Our agendas are becoming more robust. We're beginning to see a higher level of activity. We've reviewed several plats and plans today, uh, which will be reflected on your next uh, agenda during the day. Uh, and I'm seeing more sustained in, in, instead of sporadic agendas. So I think that's very encouraging. Uh, just tonight with the apartment complex, we're seeing someone who's really ready to build. He's just trying to be, he's been struggling for two years to get around to it. Now he's ready. And I'm seeing that a lot more frequently, and it's very encouraging from an economic standpoint. It seems to be that things are, are happening. We've got several things coming up. We've got, uh, and I think you'll you'll agree next month, uh, I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming back to life. Good. Well, good. That's great news. Good to hear. I don't think anybody here is dreading spending a little more time in here on uh, approval applications, you know, so that'll be, that'll be a great sign for the economy. Anything else, Mr. Adelon? That's my Mr. staff Ives? reports. Anybody? Mr. Lamb is a, is a tech specialist. I think these uh, iPads will be very beneficial to the Planning Commission. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Young. I'm glad you added that. Okay. Any, any other pertinent comments? <laughs> now we stand adjourned. I couldn't resist.